This past door racing weekend, we had young sprint car drivers shining. Earl Pearson Jr.'s streak ended. We had first time winners and a mini bulldozer at driver intros. Let's go. It's Monday, August 29th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. It was a big weekend around the country for the young talent in sprint car racing. And after what we saw, the future is very bright if you're an open wheel fan. We'll start with the World of Outlaws up north and the series debut for Ryan Timms. Friday was his 16th birthday and he made his first ever outlaw start at River Cities. On the Friday Daily Show, a lot of you were pretty positive about what was possible for Timms against the outlaws, but there were a few of you that weren't so bullish. I'd say, though, that between Friday River Cities and Saturday at Red River Valley, Tim's showed the dirt racing world that he is a young driver not to be taken lightly. In his debut, he made the feature against a 35-car field and promptly drove from 17th to 9th, grabbing a top 10 in his first race and hard charger for the night. Things went even better on Saturday as he went 7th quick in qualifying, then 3rd to 2nd in his heat race to earn a spot in the dash. A fourth place finish in that dash then led to a fourth place start in the feature. And except for a brief moment where he thought a red flag was thrown when it wasn't, it was actually just yellow. The feature was nearly flawless for him. He was in the mix all night and ended up finishing second to Carson Macedo and uh, beating Brad Sweet. So two races, two features made, two top tens, a dash appearance, a hard charger and a podium. I think the two nights went just about as well as they could have hoped for. According to the series, Tim's is now the youngest driver to ever finish on the podium with the Outlaws. In the Friday comments, Al asked about Gio Selzy's record as the youngest Outlaw winner. And Tim's has basically the next year to try and break that mark. When Gio won at Williams Grove in 2018, he was two months shy of his 17th birthday. So call it 16 years, 10 months for Gio. As of today, uh, Tim's is 16 years, three days old, so a lot of future chances for him to get a win and set a new bar. Coming up, don't expect Tim's to head west with the Outlaws. It sounds like he could be headed to Pennsylvania to take on the posse and get some valuable laps on those racetracks. As for the weekend World of Outlaws winners, Friday at River Cities, it was Brad Sweet earning win number four on the year. Uh, he was to the lead by lap 11 and was basically unchallenged the rest of the way. David Gravel and Carson Macedo joined him on the podium. The Big Cat was also quick time on the night, and over the last 422 Outlaw features, 71 have been won by the night's fast qualifier. That's a little more than 17%. And to extend that a little further and show just how important qualifying is, 65% of series wins in that span come from guys that qualify inside the top five. On Saturday night at Red River Valley, Sweet again led a bunch of laps, but pole sitter Macedo slipped by him on lap 20 and drove away to the win. Tims and Sweet finished second and third. Robbie Price driving the side 7S had a career best finish in fifth. There wasn't a ton of passing on Saturday night, and that's evident by the hard charger. Kevin Ingle went 24th to 19th to earn the award, and Ingle's 19th place finish is the second lowest finish for a hard charger with the Outlaws since 2017. Lowest finish for a hard charger was Jason Sides going 23rd to 20th at Bristol earlier this season. So now the Outlaws are headed west and they will spend the next three weeks in Washington and California. Coming up this weekend is the Skagit Nationals, which will pay $25,000 to win on Saturday night. Other tracks coming up include Grace Harbor, Silver Dollar, Hanford, and Placerville. And the other two young drivers I wanted to highlight today are 23-year-old Ayrton Jenneton, who's a past Dirt Tracker Conversations guest, and 16-year-old Corey Day. On Saturday night at Knoxville, uh, Jenneton bagged his first ever 410 there uh, when they're topping Sam Haverteep and Brian Brown. They finished fifth in both that 410 race and the makeup feature that they ran that night as well. Brian Brown ended up winning that one. And to close out the weekend, all three were on top at Husets. Day went on to the victory in his first ever 410 appearance at the South Dakota track. Ryan Timms tried to uh, run him down late but settled for second, and Jenneton rounded out the podium. So Day, Tim's, Jenneton all have great uh, runs this weekend. A couple of them pick up wins, all on the podium at Houston. It's very good weekends for all three. And again, the future is very bright uh, in sprint car racing. And since I mentioned Knoxville, their track champions were crowned on Saturday night. Mike Mayberry won the pro sprint title. Terry McCarl is your 360 track champion. And Brian Brown made up enough ground on the night on Aaron Reitzel to score the 410 title. In the Dirt Lane model world, we had both national tours in action and both had good racing and big cash paid out. At Port Royal on Saturday night, there wasn't a ton of movement in the standings. Tim McCready finished two spots behind Brandon Shepard, but still leads the championship by nearly 200 points. 
The big story on the night, though, was Earl Pearson Jr. Back in April at Port, EPJ started on the pole, but an incident with Kyle Larson took both of those drivers out of contention that night, and Pearson was left uh, wanting more after having a car capable of winning. Fast forward to Saturday night, and the four-time series champion got his due. He drove up from fourth to take the lead from Ricky Thornton Jr. on lap 10 and was able to keep RTJ behind him down the stretch to earn the $50,000 win. Thornton tried to make a pass with five laps remaining but couldn't clear the 46, and EPJ really hustled those last few laps to get the win. You could see him really working hard in that car. It was Pearson's first Lucas victory since July 10th of 2020 at Florence Speedway. It was a span of 113 races. EPJ switched over to the Jason Papagione team late in 2021, and he's been dramatically improved since then. He's nearly doubled his top five and top 10 finishes from a year ago, and his average finish is four spots better. Felt like it was only a matter of time before he got that elusive win. Lucas' season continues this coming weekend with stops at Portsmouth and Tyler County. The Word of Outlaws late models also had good money on the line with Saturday's main event winner at Davenport taking down $30,000. I picked Tanner English to win on Thursday night, which ended up being a miss, but I was correct in thinking that English was close to his first outlaw victory. On Friday night, he started 18th and was into the top 10 by halfway. A caution with 15 to go for Billy Moyer brought English into the mix in the top five, and he's uh, made his march forward, and it wasn't done just yet. Out front, Bobby Pierce and Devin Moran were battling it out, but as the laps wound down, English caught the top two. Pierce led at the white flag, and out of turn four, English was able to roll the bottom and beat both the 32 and 9 cars back to the line to score the victory by just a little over two-tenths of a second. I have 165 races for the series in the DirtTracker.com analytics database back through the 2019 season. And English's 18th to the win hard charge is the first time the Knights hard charger was also the winner. English said afterwards that he thought wins would come a little easier after getting the first one and he didn't have to wait very long. On Saturday night, after somehow escaping an incident that also took out points leader Dennis Herb Jr., English got to the lead on lap 62 and again held off Bobby Pierce to earn the win. Shannon Babb had an incredible 25th to third run to round out the podium. Not bad there for the Moequa missile. It was not a good night to be out front as early leader Ashton Winger ended up over the track at one point and finished 15th. Ryan Gustin led the most laps on the night but bowed out late with brake issues and Devin Moran suffered a flat tire. The two wins for English and the Saturday night DNF for Herb has brought the championship gap down to 98 points between the two. There are 12 race nights left in the season but I still feel like this is Herb's title. 98 points is 49 positions which means English still needs to beat Herb by four spots a night on average average to the end not impossible but still feels really unlikely the outlaws head south this weekend for stops at smoky mountain and livonia also at davenport on friday and saturday was the extreme outlaw midget series friday night it was the mount stout teammates of chase mcdermott and jacob denny who locked out the top two spots both drivers led laps but it was mcdermott getting the win in the end and Saturday night, it was all Bryant Wiedemann out front. His win made it seven different winners in seven races so far for the new Midget Tour from World Racing Group. A big bright spot on the weekend was Dazen Persley returning to Midget competition less than a year after his devastating spinal, uh, spinal cord injury at Arizona Speedway. Persley was fourth on Friday night in his first race back and eighth on Saturday. Zach Dom maintains the series points lead over Wiedemann right now. The extreme sprint cars are at Jacksonville and Spoon River in a few weeks, and the midget, uh, midgets return to racing on October 13th at Port City. In Pennsylvania over the weekend, the All-Stars closed out a busy stretch with four races in three nights between Williams Grove, Lincoln, and Bedford. Friday night at the Grove, Danny Dietrich swept both features, becoming just the fourth driver to do that during the Jack Gunn Memorial. He won the first feature from the pole. They then inverted six, which uh, put Dietrich back to six, and he won that race uh, as well. The series, though, only paid points for the first feature, which was good for Tyler Courtney because he broke something in the feature uh, in the second feature and ended up 23rd. But the DNF didn't hurt him in the championship fight against Justin Peck. Saturday night at Lincoln, Peck stayed hot, leading all the laps and scoring his fourth win in six races with the All-Stars. He held off a challenge from Freddie Raymer and bagged the Kramer Clash. He did so wearing a Kramer Williamson uh, tribute helmet. And we've seen Peck run uh, Kramer Williamson tribute paint schemes before as well. And Sunday at Bedford, Anthony Macri led all 30 laps driving that McGee 11, and he topped Tyler Courtney and Cy Lynch for the win. I told you guys that Macri would be a force in that 11 car, and he definitely was in the past week. In six starts, his worst finish was ninth. He had the win and three podiums. 
Now with Sharon up next, the gap between Courtney and Peck is still 112 points, and even with all the winning that Peck has done, he couldn't close up much because Sunshine just keeps racking up top fives. And like I said, that 23rd at Williams Grove, which was actually Courtney's worst finish of the season, won't hurt him because of that race not paying points. Going forward, things will start to look bleak for Peck. Ten race nights uh, remain for the All-Stars, but both the Tuscarora 50 at Port Royal and the Dirt Classic at Lincoln are show-up points only. So Peck really only has eight races to try to erase that gap. The Sharon Nationals for the All-Stars start on Friday. At SmackDown over the weekend, Kevin Thomas Jr. topped Jake Swanson and CJ Leary to win the second of the two prelim nights. Justin Grant, if you might remember, won the first on Thursday. Saturday night in the finale, Kyle Cummins picked up the biggest win of his career, leading flag to flag and beating CJ Leary and Brady Bacon for the SmackDown win. Cummins earned $15,000 for the victory and an additional $20,000 for leading all of the laps. So $35,000 total if your math skills are terrible. Uh, in 15 national sprint car events in 2022, Cummins has 12 top 10s, 10 top fives, and two wins. He doesn't race that often, but when he does, man, he is fast. With 11 race nights left for the USAC Sprint Cars, Justin Grant's points lead is 112 over Brady Bacon. JG now has 18 straight top 10 finishes. And uh, one final highlight of the SmackDown weekend for you, uh, Robert Ballou rolling to driver intros on a mini bulldozer. Number 12 on the side, Madman across the nose. Well done, Robert Ballou. Before we close out today, happy trails and happy retirement to the McMahon brothers. Both Paul and Bobby called it a career on Saturday night at Placerville Speedway in the winged 360 competition. Bobby was a fixture for a very long time in California, while Paul, uh, Paul was obviously an outlaw regular for so many years. Paul is actually 23rd all-time in outlaw wins with 27. Shane Golubic was the feature winner on Saturday night, topping Colby Copeland and Michael Pombo. It's a quiet day on the streaming services, only Flow Racing 24-7 going on today. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Monday. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on these videos. Remember, we are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by year's end. Please help me out uh, if you uh, haven't subscribed already. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.